Welcome to the seventh episode of All About the Experiences. I am still on a high, not only from just starting this new journey of discovery, but also I've had some pretty amazing guests and last week's guest is one of those. Actor extraordinaire, acting coach, bodybuilder, Charlie Boone was here and he shares so many wonderful insights. And I, I have to say, I was, I'm lucky because he's my friend, but he also was able to share so many wonderful things with all of us. So I want to thank Charlie for coming on the show. And um, one of the things that he said last week that really resonated to me was, um, you have to love what you do. You have to have a passion for it. You'll have to want to do it, no matter whether you're doing it for one person or one million people. Um, and it, like he said, even if you're not getting paid for it, you have to have that passion and that fire. And um, one of the things that he um, also shared was that through the love of your imagination, he was able to manifest these awesome characters and what ended up being several great projects he's had on the big screen and the small screen, but even more so um, living through his imagination, he said authentically, helps build him as a person. And um, I, I really loved that analogy. Uh, beyond that, uh, he shared about putting on the characters, it's like trying on other people and being able to see how you can live out your dreams and imagination that way. So Charlie, thank you for all of your insights and for joining us last week. And this week I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I don't have a guest. I am my guest. And um, part of my reasoning for wanting to do that, I talk to several people who come on and they share their experiences. I uh, share the experiences that we've had together and how we met. But I think it's really important on this platform that I share with all of you a little bit about myself. And I'm very fortunate because I surround myself with just fantastic people. I have been very blessed in the friends department. And I, I definitely say a lot of times, the people that I work closest to in my day job, they become my friends. And um, I, I've enjoyed this whole process of self-discovery, not only in the things that I enjoy doing, but also learning from other people. And so in just, that's what all about the experience is about. I mean, some experiences are good, some are bad, um, but all in all, from those experiences, each one of us, we have a story to tell. And so kind of segueing into that, uh, I want to tell my story. I want to share a little bit more about who I am as a person and how all of these experiences have shaped my life. Uh, many people, they, they hesitate. They hesitate to share their story. I believe that um, sometimes it's out of fear of rejection or um, not being accepted. And as much as most would say that that's not important or some people think it's very important, it is important to all of us. Everyone wants to feel like wherever they come to, they have a home, whether it's within their home or if it's their family, uh, their work family home or wherever it is, they want that feeling of um, wholeness and acceptance. And so because sometimes people hesitate when it comes to telling their story out of fear of being rejected, they kind of stand back or um, they look towards others that are more willing to share. And so I think I've shared this in the past on my podcast is that my mom and my grandmother, believe it or not, the person that you see before you now has not always been so open. Um, I was really shy. I know people have probably have a hard time believing that, but I truly was. Uh, I felt like 
I, and I think some, I mean, most people probably feel this way. When you walk into a room and let's say a room of a hundred or a thousand, which I've done in the past and had to be front and center in front of people, it's just like, whoa, all you see is all eyes on you. Well, to get over that fear in that realm, and also um, coming up as a little girl, my mom and my grandmother always challenged me to at least meet five new people every day. Find out something that you didn't know about somebody before. And also in that, you share of yourself. And so it's kind of a philosophy I've adopted and come to uh, just make it easier for me um, my day job, I'm an I'm a executive assistant uh, to C-suite level executives, but beyond that, I also do corporate events. And in that, a lot of times you're behind the scenes and you're silent, but you represent these big entities. And sometimes you're thrust into the forefront where you have to be in front of people. And in doing that, you have to feel comfortable with being your authentic self and also relaying information or gathering information to disseminate to whatever your masses are, whether it's a small group of 10 or a large group of 10,000. So with that being said, um, I'm here to share my story. Stories are much like life. They're comprised of uh, profound events and they also are comprised of simple events and simple nuances that you might encounter throughout the day. For today's episode, I'm going to turn back a few pages of my own personal book of life. And I'm going to share about who I am as a person. Um, many of you know that I mentioned uh, Russell Edmond. Uh, he is a radio talk show radio host um, at LA Talk Radio. And he's kind of mentored me through this process of becoming a podcast host. And also, um, even in my uh, day gig, if you will, when I'm doing um, corporate event planning and whatnot, as he's a, also a third party planner that, let me tell you, if you are ever looking to do an event, whether it be large or small, I, all I can do is tell you, utilize your resources. If that means tapping into a third party planner, um, just really tapping into any of your networking resources and um, your CVBs within uh, the city that you're in, if you have one. Um, if not, talk to me. I'm your girl. I'm all about networking and I'll point you in the right direction. And if you're wondering about how to contact me, if you don't already have my personal number, you can contact me at Cheryl at allabouttheexperiences.com. Just that simple. And also, if you um, want to keep up with all the things that are happening in the way of the All About the Experiences brand, brand excuse me, please definitely uh, check out my website. I update it weekly. Um, it also has a link there to my other platforms in the way of Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, and um, it's just a way of staying connected. So my grandmother used to always say, a story is only a story if it's told, baby. Well, I'm here to tell my story. <laughs> um, I'm a firm believer that when we share our experiences with others, we can connect with each other. It's, it's a way of just tearing down those barriers and just being authentic and open. And it, when you remove those barriers, it brings us all closer together. And that's really important. Telling my story is definitely a part of my personal growth. My hope is that through my journey of discovery that I can assist others who are actively engaged in, you know, trying to find their own personal growth and um, personal breakthroughs. And so one of the things that um, I was speaking recently with a good friend of mine and just kind of going over like, you know, in the wake of COVID, we've all put on a few pounds. I shouldn't say we all, but I know I have. 
So wanting to get back into the mindset of being good to myself by changing the way that I eat and exercising more and just really doing some good self-care. And so with that being said, um, one of the things that I shared was that I used to be well over 300. Well, when I started caring, I was about 334 pounds, believe it or not. And um, people tease me, I'm 4'10 and three quarters. So that's a lot of weight on this small frame. So with that being said, it was a time for me to decide, what are you going to do? And it wasn't about how I felt like I looked in clothing in that sense, because you know, your girl has always been a little bit stylish, if I must say so myself. But it was more about being healthy. I've had several, I'm, I'm definitely a proponent of using your benefits. And so I went into the doctor to kind of start this this path, if you will, of, you know, just becoming a better me physically. And when I went into the doctor, I had a new primary care. And so of course, to in order to um, start that relationship with this new primary care, he was going down the list of all the different things. And I was just like, oh yeah, that's in my history. Yeah, that's in my medical history. And most specifically when it came to cancer in my family, one of the things that he kept asking was, well, what do you know about this? And, I'm, and I was kind of annoyed. I hate to even admit that, but I think it's important in the way of telling this story. But I was just like, it's in my medical record. But his point was to get a better understanding of what I knew about my own personal journey in health and also what's in our families. Um, a lot of diseases that plague us all, believe it or not, they're hereditary. Or you have things within the environment that are around you that may trigger something and you know, cause something to rise to the surface, if you will. So with that being said, um, my doctor at the time I was there for my full physical checkup, um, possibly to get a recommendation to some sort of weight loss program, and then also to do my yearly um, womanly checks, which include a, a breast exam and a cervical and pap smear. And that's fairly routine. Any ladies that are listening know that's something that typically you'll go and have done once a year. So in that time and, and him grabbing and, oh, I shouldn't say grabbing, huh? Gathering <laughs> that information, uh, he sent off my samples um, from my exam and said that, you know, I would likely see, receive something in the mail, providing everything was good to go. But um, based on the history that I supplied, he also suggested that I go and have bracket testing done because of the prevalence that I've had in my family of cancer. Most recently, I lost my Aunt Cheryl, who I'm her namesake, to breast cancer. And so ladies um, and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons why I want to tell this portion of my story, because when you lose people that you love, from a disease that ravages not only their life, but everyone's life around them because all you want them to do is to, fr to fight and survive. It's important that we take measures, whatever measures those may be, that we can arrest this type of disease and preventative me measures, hopefully, but um, definitely in the unfortunate event that you do end up with a cancer, that it's something that is treatable and curable. So with that being said, I went and did all the blood work. I'm thinking, here it is, I'm getting poked and prodded. And all I wanna do is drop a few LVs, right? When the time that I did that and I go home, within three days, I got a call from my primary care. And he told me that I have cancer and that I would likely need to have a hysterectomy and they wouldn't know to what extent until 
I was in surgery. So being as young as I was at the time, I was 32 years old when I was diagnosed and it was just like, wow, I have a, a two-year-old and I have an, a nine-year-old and I'm like, I'm, I'm in school and I'm working, I'm, I'm just finding my way. What does this mean? Well, what it meant is, is that I got to fight this and I got to figure out how I need to be here, not only for my children, but for my family, for my husband, make sure that they were good. So what did I do? <laughs> well, I had my surgery date, which was in within the week, actually. That's how urgent that they um, took that on. And I have to tell you, I was with, um, of course, I don't know if everyone knows this, but um, I'm former of, or a veteran. And so I was at the Balboa Naval Medical Hospital. And it is a teaching and learning hospital, but I'm so glad they were very hands-on and were very adamant that I get in and I get this process started um, as soon as possible to have my best chances at beating this and surviving and living to talk about it, which I am thankful to say I have and I'm here. So with that being said, um, for me to prep, I decided that just in case by chance that the, in the worst case scenario happened and I didn't make it out of the surgery or I didn't survive this disease, that I'm gonna cook for my family. So I decided to go to the commissary and stock up on everything that I possibly could. You would think that I was making Thanksgiving dinners for the masses and I cooked and cooked and cooked and um, put things in the deep freezer and clean and crazy. And all I can say is that I, <laughs> that crazy neurotic behavior was probably, well, it was, it was because I was scared. I was scared because I was facing my own mortality. I was scared because it likely would mean that if I didn't survive this, I wouldn't be here any longer to see my children grow up, to possibly have grandchildren. Not that I want it, <laughs> not right now, <laughs> but just, all the things in life that I would miss out on. And I didn't want that. So then I went into a different mode. I decided I'm a fight like hell. And that's exactly what I did. So I go in and I have my surgery, um, which was not without its hiccups. I won't go into that, but um, let me just tell you this. Twice on the table during that surgery, they almost lost, lost me. And um, my family, I feel for them. They were sitting in the, the waiting room where family sit, waiting to, you know, for me to come out on the other side. And they kept seeing the blue light going off, which meant there was a cold blue in that operating suite. That cold blue is me. But God is not done with me yet, because again, I'm still here. So moving past that, um, Six months after we, we were under the assumption that everything was captured and I was good to go, but then, you know, you go back for your, your wellness checks and it wasn't. I still had some cancerous cells that were there. So we started a round of chemo and radiation and you think that you know. Now, anybody that knows me knows I'm okay with the locks because I switch it up a lot. And that's part of where that started from, to be honest with you. But so make a long story short, um, that process, sometimes everyone is different. You don't lose your hair necessarily. Or if you do, it's not in clumps like some people think. Sometimes you think, oh, I'm good. I may have missed this side effect. And then you're in the shower and you're washing your hair and you think you're like, oh, the hair is still in my face and you're realizing that your hair is coming out. And even though you know that it's a side effect or that this could possibly happen and you're like, but I'm alive and I'm getting this treatment, there's something about that 
that sets in and it makes this whole process even more real. And so that was my experience. I had some minor freak outs there. And then I was just like, you know what? It could be a whole lot worse. And so you push through. And then sometimes vanity sets in and then you still push through. Um, that's when I got into wigs. Hey, look at it. It's it's a whole it's a whole lifestyle now for me. I love the convenience of them and uh, just just the diversity I can wear. Like every day I wake up and it's something different, and it's become my thing. And people gravitate to me and say, "Hey, weren't you the one who had the red hair on the other day or the blue?" I'm like, "Yeah," but if that is my way of getting people to let down their walls so that I can share with them, then hey, I'm okay with it. So I um, make it through treatment, um, surgery, and the process that comes with realizing that your health is literally wealth. Without it, there's no you this isn't working, there's no you. So going through that process made me realize I've got to do something to be healthier. I wanted to be here for my family. I wanted to, who knew that I would actualize and have something like this. I always thought I was going to be Oprah, but now I have my own platform. And so I say that to say, when you recognize that there are certain physical limitations that if you don't address them and become a healthier version of yourself that it may affect whether you're here or not it's the motivating factor it definitely was for me so i get to the point where i start caring like i told you about earlier and i'm somewhere teetering around 334 pounds. Still active, believe it or not. Um, at this time, I was uh, swimming two to three times a day, uh, not a day, I'm sorry, a week, uh, playing tennis. I played tennis in high school and um, I was playing tennis during this portion. I was like walking around, mainly around the mall and to Starbucks and whatnot, but I was moving nonetheless. But I wasn't doing all the things that I could possibly be doing to sustain myself. So I started the process again. I decided that I was going to be more active and more healthy and start walking more. And so went back to my physician after all of the changes that I went through, of course, due to the cancer diagnosis, surgery and chemo and radiation. and. I'm trucking along within my remission. But my doctor, when I came in, he was just like, whoa. <laughs> so funny how doctors can be brutally honest, but let me tell you, it ignites something. He goes, well, the one thing that you didn't get <laughs> as a benefit from having chemo is weight loss. And I was like, it's like, wow. And he was right, I did not. So again, when I started to care, I was just like, well, let me look, where am I at? Get on the scale and I'm 334 pounds. And somehow when I saw it on the number down there and when he calls it out, like he was alarmed, I should have been at, in that moment as well, but it is what it is. Sometimes you're in denial. So he told me, he was just like, you are more than half fat. And I was just like, wow, that's rude. And then he's like, do you hear what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, I hear you. But like, I don't know why this is happening. I said, Maybe it's a side effect of, you know, cancer. And he was just like looking at me. And he was like, well, what I need you to do, young lady, is to do a food diary. And he says, I want you to do it for a complete week. And then you're going to come back next week. And we're going to talk about some changes that we're going to enact. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. Like, I document everything in my life, you know, whether it's my own personal journey, because I do journal, but also for work. So I was just like, easy peasy. 
So I do this for a week and I come back in and he's looking and he was just like, something is not making sense here, young lady. And I'm like, well, what is it? And he's looking, he goes, I'm looking at what you have written down here. And there's no way if you're eating this, that you would be maintaining the weight that you have. He goes, you're eating like someone who, you know, is, is much smaller and not as heavy. And, um, for the most part, it was relatively heavy. He goes, there must be something missing. Let's go through this again. And so now I'm getting a little annoyed. I'm like, are you going to help me or not? So we start walking through my day. He goes, I'm not going to even look at this food diary. Let's talk about today. So I was just like, okay. So I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm here. <laughs> he was just like, no, what did you do from the time you woke up? And so I started talking to him about what my daily routine was. And I even threw in there about how I'm doing the diary, the food diary. But at one point, I think I had said, oh, and on my way before here, I stopped at Starbucks. I got a coffee and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and he was just like, okay, I'm looking at this diary and that's not here. And I'm like, it isn't? And I'm like, oh, well, that's <laughs> my mind. Well, that's liquid. <laughs> that was something to drink. He goes, and it has caloric intake, young lady. And so he immediately hops on his laptop and he brings up and he's just like, give me your order. So I'm giving him this back in the day when I was a frat girl, Venti, of course, because you want to maximize your dollar's worth. And he was just like, how often are you doing this when you didn't mark it down? And I realized that I was hitting up Star Busy's about three or four times a day. And when he showed me what the calories were and he gave me an idea of what my caloric intake was in a day compared to what my physical expenditure of those calories were, I was like floored. And then it became sobering. I was taken in more than 5,800 calories a day. And the vast majority of that, I was drinking. And I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about sweet, dessert-filled, fluffy drinks. <laughs> so I have to laugh because it's, it's, it's really, it's, it was sad. But I say that to say it's like, Sometimes it's not until you educate yourself or someone educates you that you recognize what it truly is and the changes that you can make. So he told me, I know you don't understand what I'm saying here, but he goes, I want you just to cut out one of your drinks every single day. And he says, and if you don't lose weight, and then he goes, I don't know what the heck I'm practicing for. And he goes, I want you to come back in a week. And I'm just like, I'm sick of coming here. And I got to thinking, is it because you want my, co my copay? I don't know. So I was just like, okay, I'm dedicated to this. I mean, I've been through so much more. Why not? So I go ahead and I still continue to do my food diary. And I'll cut out one. And then I was just like, I'm going to one-up him. I'm going to drink some extra water. <laughs> so I was probably getting in two cups of water nowadays. I know it's sad. I get back to his office the following week and lo and behold, I step on the scale and I've lost about anywhere, I think it was between five and seven pounds or something like that. And I was like, wow, just in one week from cutting out one drink a day and adding one cup of water extra. And I hadn't done anything differently in my physical. And so he says, so you see that. So imagine what it would be if you cut it out completely or you reduce that by half and up your water intake, up your physical fitness. And I was just like, yeah, imagine. <laughs> so I, I guess you can tell I still wasn't fully on board. And he told me, he says, as young as you are and as heavy as you are, you will be dead if you do not lose this weight. Your heart cannot sustain this. And I thought about my kids again. And I thought, I have to do something about this. I have to do something so that I can solidify my place here amongst my family, my friends, and continue on to my 
whatever my career path was going to be at that point. And so I made an active choice each day in how I was going to eat differently, drink differently, exercise. And because of that, things started changing. Didn't happen overnight. And I actually ended up going ahead and having gastric bypass. A lot of people don't know that, but it was my choice. It was my choice to take control and to do something different to sustain myself and make sure that I'm here and I'm not four foot 10 and three quarters. Don't ever forget my three quarters. I need all my inches and carrying over 300 pounds. And in making that choice, I realized that it changed the way that you eat because it's not like just being on a diet. You eat the wrong things and you're violently ill. You eat the, too much of anything and you're violently ill. And then also, if you don't keep up with the exercise, you're gonna have a multitude of hanging skin and nobody wants that, trust me. So it was an active, choice to make a difference, push forward, and make sure that I changed the traje trajectory of my life and my physical well-being so that I could be. So this is my story that I wanted to share with you all because I think more often than not, and I think we all can totally understand that with everything that's going on with COVID, we're all sedentary right now. We're, we're, we're sheltering in place. We're eating foods that are comforting, um, making us feel better because sometimes things seem a little uncertain. In fact, things seem pretty uncertain. But the one thing that we certainly can do is to make sure that we're maintaining our health, not only for ourselves, but for the people who love us and so that we can make a difference and bring something back. Just like people brought things to me, I'm hoping that me sharing this, this little snippet of my life will make a difference for you. One of the things that I can definitely say um, with regards to health and wellness is when I was battling cancer, there were a lot of signs um, one of the signs was unexplained weight gain. And Lord knows I had a lot of that. Um, I had uh, heavy periods and I was probably a lot, but where you're almost hemorrhaging and that was a sign. Um, there were a number of different things that looking back on it now, I recognize that these were things that I should have paid closer attention to where I could have made a difference in how not only um, I was diagnosed, but also just in how I live my life after that. You know, I can definitely say now, if something aches or something doesn't feel right, I am going in, I'm going to be seeing, well, now, and I literally have done this even since um, COVID has um, been in play, but doing a tele um, doctor's appointment, you know, your health is your wealth. And without it, you will not be here. And it's important that you treat your health like you would your bank account. Because you have too many withdrawals, and you'll be tapped out. So because of that, I encourage everyone, but right now I'm spe specifically speaking to the ladies that are listening. A lot of times as women, we will take on so much and um, if we're not feeling ourselves or we're not feeling well, we'll excuse it. Oh, it's stress. Oh, I ate something. Oh, I was like trying to make myself feel better with um, instead of, you know, a good a good dinner. I had wine, chocolate, and popcorn. Trust me, I've done that. But we always have some way that we're like, oh, it's this or it's that. But guess what? 
those are signs that God has given us within this system that we call our bodies to let us know when we need to address some areas. Sometimes you can see it and sometimes you can't. But at the end of the day, those signs are there for a reason. And I'm so thankful that I'm now in tune with myself. There's still days that I push it or I overdo it or I don't listen. I mean, we're human. But I have a plethora of different reasons that I can look back on now that I don't want to exercise those anymore. I want to actually exercise and do something to make a difference so that I can sustain my health. And I encourage all of you to do that. Now to my gentlemen that are listening, I encourage you to do the same. If you're hurting or you're not, something just feels off, then definitely go in and have it checked out. I think it's really important to definitely tap into men's health. Make sure if you're of a certain age that you're getting your prostate checked. Make sure that you're checking your breast or your chest, whatever you want to call it, but make sure that you're doing that. We're losing men, many, many men to these horrible diseases. And a lot of it could have been prevented through early detection. So I encourage you all to tap into that self-care mode and do something to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you're sustaining yourself for your family and your loved ones and your friends. Because we, we are an amazing, amazing world where we have all of these different people and the crazy thing is we all have bodies. They all are coming in different shapes, sizes, colors, and whatnot. And we're all still the same to some degree, but we're all uniquely different as well. So I said all this and shared all this because I think it's really important for us all to realize that we mean something. We all mean something. I'm incredibly blessed to have this platform to be able to share on. I'm incredibly blessed to be able to have people who care, who want to be around me, who want to come on this platform and share with all of you. I am finally in a place, like I started off saying, like how my grandmother and my mother always encouraged me you need to go out and meet new people because you're going to learn something from them and they're certainly going to learn something from you. Well, I take that to heart. I get so many wonderful seeds that help me grow as a person. And I, I realize that sometimes the gifts that God has bestowed upon us and we're able to share with others Sometimes we don't want to, or we don't even want to acknowledge that we have those. And I'm in a place now where I'm realizing it's okay, as my good friend, Dr. Uh, Pamela Hardy Shepherd would say, to receive. Sometimes it's easier for us to give a compliment than it is to receive one. Sometimes it's easier for us to receive a compliment than to literally pick up a mirror and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, Cheryl, you all right. You're beautiful inside. You're beautiful outside. You care about people. You want people to care about you. You want to make a difference. You want to be accepted. You want to be loved. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to have that self-reflection. It's okay to receive love and admiration from the people who love and care about you. Just like it's people out here that want to sling hate, we need to sling love. We need to sling respect. We need to let people know what it does when they say things or they do things that are 
negatively impacting you. There's a way to say things. Some people don't realize that they're doing the things that they're doing, and then some people know exactly what they're doing. But it's important for us to stand within our own truths and be confident and comfortable to let someone know if they're hurting you, if they're saying something that does not feel good to you. And I feel like when you do that and you're being transparent and authentic, at the end of the day, we're all people. And we, as, as vastly different as we are, we have lots of similarities. And those are the things that when we start breaking down those barriers will allow us to become just tighter units in realizing that we need to care and love on all of you, all of us, seriously. All of this hate that's spewing is so unnecessary and it makes you sick. It literally makes people sick. And it's counterintuitive, I'll, I'll tell you that. So my hope is that, <laughs> wow, I didn't expect to go like this, but my hope is that through me sharing this chapter of my health and wellness, it will inspire someone else. In closing, uh, there is no right or wrong way to tell your story. Your story is just that, it's uniquely yours. You deserve to share your story. You deserve to be heard. And literally how you choose to share is up to you. I am a firm believer that sharing our experiences reaffirms our truths. Well, I've put my truths out there. While sharing your truths will definitely empower you to be a better version of yourself, um, I also believe that it's good to show others that you have flaws. They may share those same flaws and they would be able to connect with you and relate to you. And that transparency fosters love, if you will. And I'm not talking about like you're in love with somebody. I mean, like love that you can look at someone and have a mutual respect for them and just try to make a difference in their life and hopefully vice versa. Well, in closing, I want to say thank you all for rocking with me and really helping me promote my All About the Experiences brand and um, learning a little bit more about me, I hope. And um, I look forward to continuing to share. And all I can impart to you all is just to be good to each other. But more importantly, please be good to yourself. You deserve it. Thank you.